Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. If you watched my last video, we uh, uh, disassembled and reverse engineered a uh, plug pack for a, uh, a non-powered electric microphone. And I, we uh, went through the innards and I put the schematic up on the board. But the question I have today is, is how do you uh, reverse engineer something uh, if you can't take it apart? And I wanted to do this to my video camera, but I can't really record and do measurements on the camera at the same time. So instead, we're going to use my laptop as a stand-in today. If you look here on the side, we have a, a headphone and microphone plug-in here. The microphone is uh, this guy right here. And I have checked previously, this do does provide plug-in power for unpowered microphones. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna check to see what kind of uh, voltage comes out of this port. And we're going to figure out what the uh, pull-up resistor value is inside the laptop without actually having to take it apart because who really wants to disassemble their laptop? To help us accomplish our goals, we're going to use one of these. This is a TRRS uh, breakout board for a uh, headphone jack. And uh, this came in the uh, hacker box that uh, I did an unboxing on a few videos ago. And we're going to use a cord which, you know, one end plugs into the microphone uh, jack and the other end plugs into the breakout board. Uh, now we're going to grab the cord here, plug it into our headphone jack like that. We're going to plug this into the uh, breakout board here like that, and then plug that into here. Uh, this helps us uh, keep this stable, and we're going to use this for uh, probing a little bit later, and let's see what kind of voltage we get. So uh, it may be difficult to tell from this angle. Let me, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Like that. Oh, too close. There we go. Uh, the uh, breakout uh, for the headphone jack gives us uh, the sleeve, the ring two, the ring one, and the tip. Because this is not a true TRRS uh, three and a half millimeter uh, jack, the sleeve and ring two will be shorted together and our interest lies in ring one and the tip. So uh, let me zoom back out here. So you can see the meter. I have the meter set to volts DC and we can measure the sleeve to the tip. And we can see to do like that the voltage that is on there and it looks like that is just some residual voltage and I think what we need to do is we need to plug this into a microphone to fool the port into thinking that there's actually a microphone attached like that give it a second because I think this is a smart port and uh, it won't actually provide real power unless it thinks there is a microphone plugged in. And we plugged it in like that. And now let's try it again. Go sleeve to tip. Nope, and of course it has to disappoint. Possibly, and I have run into this in the past as well, that we may need an application that actually t uses the microphone to uh, keep the power on. So let me go ahead and launch that. Like that. Okay, and uh, hello, hello, testing. Okay, so now I have an application running that's actually using the microphone. Uh, 
and I verified that uh, signals are making their way to the computer from the microphone. And now let's measure some voltages. Okay, this uses a 3.7 volts on the tip and 3.7 volts, 3.72 on ring one and ring two and the sleeve are grounded. To do the testing, we're going to use uh, resistors. I have three resistors here and we're going to create a resistive divider and we're going to calculate uh, what the, uh, how much the voltage drops well, we're gonna measure how much the voltage drops and then using that measurement, we're gonna calculate, knowing one value of a resistive divider, what the resistance in the laptop actually is. When we did our uh, initial measurement, the resistance of the meter is fairly high. I think it's one to two mega ohms. And so we can, that's close enough to consider uh, measuring it open circuit. So that voltage of uh, 3.720 uh, volts is uh, the voltage coming out of there. Uh, to make our calculations a little more accurate, we're gonna switch the meter over to ohms and we're going to measure the resistance of one of, of these resistors one at a time. Like that. So this is 9.91 uh, K ohms. And uh, that's going to, let's see here, 9.91 uh, K. And now we're going to use that to do our measurements. Let me switch this over to volts like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this resistor across the uh, tip and ring two or the sleeve, whichever, because the ring two and the sleeve are both grounds. And uh, these resistors did come out of like a bandolier type uh, packaging where a whole bunch of them are stripped together with uh, paper and adhesive on the sides and I did cut the ends off these resistors because that glue uh, is very cheap and usually it, you know residues left on the resistor so by cutting the tips off the leads you clean you get rid of that glue and so now we'll insert that resistor and we will uh, measure the voltage of course, I got my leads all tangled up here, like that. We're already set to voltage, and let's measure it. Oh. All right, let me make that a positive reading. So we are at 2.996 volts. Let me go ahead and record that, 2.996, like that. And our previous reading was 3.720, like that. And uh, what we can do is uh, check both the tip and ring one. So if I pull this out gently and then drop it into here, which now we're going ring one to sleeve. We have 2.9956. I'd say that that last digit is within the margin of error. So they're effectively the same. And that's what we would expect. We would expect the sub both circuits in here to be matched. Now we're going to do the next resistance value. Go ahead and pluck this guy out of the board, switch back over to ohms. And this isn't the greatest meter for ohms, but eh, good enough. So this guy measures uh, two, no, oh, come on. It's kind of hard to, 2.159K, 2.159K, like that. And we're going to then repeat the same procedure. Let me go ahead and switch this back over to volts. And let's go tip to ring two, like that. And we're back at volts like that, and we're at 1.766, 1.766.
0.766 like that and that's what we would expect the lower the resistance the lower the voltage is going to be because this is the bottom end of the uh, resistive uh, divider and again lather rinse repeat we're going to yank this guy and i'm just going to assume it's the same for both we saw that it's close enough switch this back to ohms like that and this is 0.989k 0.989k like that switch this back to volts And same thing, we're going to go ahead and measure the voltage here, and it's 1.090. 1.090. Alrighty, now that we've got the uh, voltage measurement versus the resistance measurements, now I can go ahead and throw this up onto the uh, dry erase board with the uh, numbers. And so I have the results summarized here on the whiteboard. When the uh, when the the port was effectively open, we got a voltage of 3.72. When uh, the resistance was 9.91k, the voltage was 2.996. When the resistance was 2.159k, the resistance was 1.766 volt. And when it was 989 ohms, it was 1.09. To do a real quick summary of a voltage divider, what we have here is this voltage divider. You have VCC up here, R1, R2, and V out. What we were uh, measuring is we were measuring VCC, and that was in the open condition here. Uh, because the meter, as I mentioned, has an input impedance of one to two mega ohms, uh, the resistance R1 here is effectively swamped out by resistance R2, which in this case ends up being the meter. And uh, the V out is going to be almost exactly VCC, and the meter I have isn't super accurate, so that last digit, something like that, will be lost to the noise and so uh, we can assume that when we're measuring the voltage from here to here it's going to be open. Then as we swap out R2, R1 is, is the resistor that's inside the computer, we get a different V out. So when R2 is 9.91k ohms, V out is 2.996 and so on and so forth. And the formula for a uh, voltage divider uh, is V out equals VCC times uh, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And uh, what this formula tells us is that uh, uh, as R2 gets uh, smaller and smaller, uh, R, you know, this uh, fraction times VCC gives you a smaller and smaller V out. And that's exactly the trend that we saw here. That uh, when it's open, it's 3.72, and then 2.996, 1.766, 1.09, so on and so forth. And you can rearrange this formula to solve for R2 because you know what your VCC is, you know what your V out is, and you know what your uh, R2 is. And that covers all but a single variable, but this is not math class. And I just used a, a voltage divider calculator online and uh, calculated what the uh, resistance value is for each one of these values. And drum roll please, the value of R1 is 2.390k ohms. And mind you, uh, the whole point of this video was that we 
uh, were able to reverse engineer something about a system without actually having to disassemble it, figure out what the resistance value was, measure it, etc. We uh, took some empirical measurements externally and we were able to uh, infer what the values of both VCC and R1 were in the system without actually having to disturb it. Uh, this type of uh, reverse engineering is fairly common because it's quite common that uh, due to whatever reasons you can't actually disassemble something or w even if you do disassemble it it's too complex to figure out what it does inside and so you can analyze what's inside a system to reverse engineering by applying stimulus and taking measurements. If you have any questions or comments, you're always uh, welcome to uh, leave them down below. Uh, and uh, don't forget to give me a big old thumbs up, that always helps. And uh, thank you for watching.